So when you get the offer of an eight-year deal, what are you thinking apart from oh, Christmas, Christmas has come early? Well, I was, uh, I, we'd been given five deals to start with. Yeah. Uh, so we had the five-year deals in there. So um, I remember, I think Mike had said to Andy Woodman or somebody around about when they were out one night or whatever, something around that, um, or a game that, you know, we're, we're talking about giving you a year contracts and that obviously filters back to me and John Carver. And uh, and, and then he, pr- he produced them, you know, he says, um, you know, you guys have been loyal to me, you've done a good job. Um, so I want to be loyal to you as well. You know, I, what, what, it works both ways. He says, I don't want you to go anywhere, so I don't want you to go anywhere either. So it was the loyalty uh, both ways that it worked. I mean, it was it's probably a record contract, isn't it, in terms of length that's ever been given in the Premier League. Um, but of course, we, we were really happy to sign them and away you go, you know. I mean, we knew as well, we, we knew at the time, you know, whether you've got a three year contract or an eight year contract, you can get sacked at any time. If the results aren't going well, you, you, you're out the door. But um, it, was, it, was, it was different. I'll, I'll give you that. It's different. And I haven't had an eight year contract since. <laughs> it only expired a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Fantastic. Stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, Go back on to. That's the way he wanted loyalty both ways. That's what he wanted. No, it's, no, it's, it's, it's good business sense, if we're being honest. If, you know, as much as people talk about Mike and that, that sort of sense, it is good business to you know, keep the people that you want at the club because the people ultimately are either going to deliver or they're not going to deliver. But if you've got trust in them, it'll help you in the long run. But going back on to, uh, towards Alan's uh, period where it wasn't going so well, and yeah. towards when he actually did leave um, on the, the Christmas 2014. Do you think Alan Pardew was ever given enough credit for the job he was given at Newcastle United? And do you feel that the criticism that he did receive, particularly towards the maybe the last 12 months of, the, of his tenure at Newcastle, was justified or not? No, it wasn't justified, but I also think it was the fans' reactions probably to Mike Ashley. They thought they could get through the manager. Uh, to Mike, I think that's what it was. It was probably the frustration in terms of what was being signed and what was not being signed. So I think Alan b- bore the front of, uh, fr- of of the fans because he he's in front of the camera, he's on the sidelines. You, you you've got nowhere to hide. Uh, and I thought it was a re- it was a difficult period for him, um, but also he won the race. He stood strong and, and worked through it. He definitely didn't get the credit that he deserved, considering the, uh, what was being brought in and the teams that were being put together and the league positions. To, because if you look at the next season, Newcastle got relegated without them being there and uh, the structure that he put in place. Whatever you think, he was a coach, a manager, whatever, he kept them in the Premier League for, was it four and a half seasons? Something like that, three and a half, four and a half seasons, something yeah. like that. Um, and, and the next year, with the same team and probably some additions, Wijnaldum and the rest of it, that team went down. That's That speaks volumes of what he actually did do. Yeah. I mean, for the record, I've always liked... Alan Pardew. I mean, I know I said earlier that, and I stand by it, that Chris Hewton shouldn't have been sacked at the time because he'd done a, an amazing job. But I, 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 and I agree with you, Steve. I think Alan did a fantastic job. And I think he was harshly treated by some as, aspects of the uh, of the fan base. But what I did like about, oh, I said, you shouldn't really like this about Alan Pardew, but... You, every now and again with Alan, you get a little incident that which shouldn't happen, but it's yeah. actually quite funny. I mean, like n- nudging a linesman or, I mean, it's not a headbutt against Myler, but when you're, obviously, you and John Carver and Andy Woodman are part of that team, what, what are the, what's the conversation like after he's pushed over a linesman or headbutted David Myler? Well, you're certainly, well, you're certainly not, you're certainly not going to tell him he's wrong or the rest of it because what you do, <laughs> what you are getting, well, no, but what you really are getting from uh, from Alan was authenticity in terms of he was involved in the game, he cared, he was passionate, you know what I mean? So it, re- it mattered to him. So these incidents sometimes that would happen would just be him just going over the top a little bit and just spilling over to, to the passion that was that was actually what he wanted to do. Um, of, of course, they're all wrong at the time. He knows they're wrong at the time. You know what I mean? But look back, you have to live and learn by those, and you you, you make them actions. You've just got to stand by it. So um, we certainly weren't laughing about them afterwards. I can tell you that now. You know, it wasn't there wasn't a conversation where you're going, "Oh, that was funny." There were the ones of and the ones of uh, he realised that he had to put right and apologise, and he got fined for the ones off the club, um, especially the Myler incident. And of course, things happen in football. 
you know, things happen in football with passionate people. Of course they do. Look at Cantona jumping over a fence, trying to karate kick somebody, you know, and people are passionate when they're in the... It's a, it's a heated environment where your livelihood's on the line, your li livelihood's on the line. Uh, and sometimes it spills over and spills over on benches, spills over on the pitch. And sometimes a manager will end up on the pitch. Um, I've seen Diego Simeone kick a ball on the pitch. He's ran onto the pitch and kicked a ball when a game's still going on. So these are passionate guys who care about the game. So sometimes it'll spill over and you've just got to take the consequences afterwards, but never lose your authenticity in terms of, I still care. I still want this team to win. And that's what that's why that happens sometimes. It's a passionate game. 50,000 people. It's not always easy.